or at the right side of the game window. Let's set the velocity dot x times equals negative one. There's that shorthand. It's essentially the same thing but with multiplication instead of addition. Okay. So now we need to check if the position dot x is less than or equal to zero, which means it is less than or equal to the left side of the game window. Velocity dot x times equals negative one. You can add that up here, but I like to the reason I don't add it up here is because there's an advanced technique we can use Oops. that will actually make it harder for it to process this if but it'll sort of correct your errors in the coding if you have high velocity sometimes it'll jump over and things can cause problems if you leave it this way and I'll explain after I finish the other two ifs if position dot y is greater than or equal to now we're dealing with y so we want it if it's greater than or equal to the bottom side of the game window we essentially do the same thing but with the viewport dot height so if position dot y is greater than or equal to the bottom side of the game window we essentially want to do the same thing but with velocity dot y negative one else if position dot y is less than or equal to zero which means it is less than or equal to the top side of the game window we want velocity dot y times equals negative one. Alright. So let's press F5 and check what this looks like. So as you can see it'll bounce and according to the code it's correct. But you see it escapes the game window just a little bit and bounces back. That is because our origin is set to the top left of the sprite. We can change that and that's where the difficulty in origin becomes because if you change the origin you have to change your coding in a lot of places so make sure you have the origin correct before you do any heavy duty position checking and stuff like that. So I'm gonna leave the origin at the top left so I'm gonna need I'm going to need to correct the bouncing of the height and width. Now in order to do that you saw it bounces it escapes the game window until the whole left side of the sprite is missing and as soon as it's missing it'll bounce back. So that means that it is identifying the top left of the position. So we want to make it think that we want to bounce from the bottom right. So we just need to subtract the player texture dot width. Oops, we're at height. And then the width for the width. Player dot height. Alright, so now if we press F5, it'll bounce thinking we're on the bottom right of the sprite. Oops. That's why. Alright, so that coding is now correct and that is essentially what I had planned for this tutorial. Now what I was talking about earlier is more in-depth checking so sometimes if your velocity is a weird amount it'll bounce and then it will still be greater than or negative greater than or equal to the right side which means you'll get sort of a infinite bouncing by one pixel on the 
right side of the game window. So you need to do more checking to be 100% safe. So, if position.x is greater than or equal to the right side of the game window, and velocity.x is greater than zero, which means we are traveling in the right direction, we want it to transfer to the left direction. I'm just going to have brackets for better formatting. And I'm going to do the same thing for the others. But that's going to be less than zero. And that's going to be greater than zero. And y velocity dot y is greater than zero. And this is going to be y and less than zero. Now, if we run it, we'll achieve the same result. But that's just for more error correction. You do not really need to do that, but you need to make sure that your program will run in all cases. Since you're hard coding the velocity, you really don't need to do this. But in case you run into problems where you do this check bounds and something weird occurs, try this. And in most cases, it will solve your problems. So that's it for this tutorial. Next tutorial, let me open the solution. We will add more animation for rotation and scaling. So I hope to see you next time.